Hello and welcome to Droix. Today we are taking a look at the GBD Pocket 3 high end model. We will be unboxing it, having a look at the features, then running some benchmark tests to see how it performs. Let's start with the unboxing. We have the GPD Pocket 3 which we will show in more detail shortly. Underneath is a quick start user guide in Chinese and English. Under the packaging is a hand strap for the Pocket 3. There is a USB Type-C cable for charging. And last but not least is a charger. We will include the correct adapter for your country when you order from us at Droix. The GBD Pocket 3 measures 7.8 by 5 by 0.78 inches when closed and weighs 725 grams. The Pocket 3 lifts open to reveal the 8 inch HIPS 1920 by 1200 resolution screen which supports 10 point touch control. On the top left corner is a 2 megapixel 1600 by 1200 camera which is great for video calls. On the base of the Pocket 3 are the left, middle and right mouse buttons. In the middle is a fingerprint scanner which also acts as the power button. And on the right is the mouse pad. Below is a QWERTY keyboard that is backlit and can be toggled with a key press combination. The display can be rotated clockwise and then folded up to turn the laptop into a tablet style device. It can be used in conjunction with the stylus available to purchase separately. One thing of note is that there is no sensor to check when the screen is rotated. The screen does not reorientate automatically and you would need to do this manually. On the right side is a 3.5mm headphone jack and two USB 3.2 ports. On the left side is a USB Type-C port and HDMI output for connecting to a TV or monitor. The Type-C port is Thunderbolt 4 compatible and can be used with a variety of peripherals such as a hub or even an external graphics card. On the back is a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port followed by the modular port which we will show in more detail next. The GBD Pocket 3 features a modular port which allows you to swap the module to provide other input and output options. With the Pocket 3 you get the USB 3.2 module installed as standard. There are other options available to purchase separately such as an RS-232 serial port for industry data communication and a single port KVM control module that has HDMI and USB support. Exchanging the modules is very easy, simply unscrew the two screws, remove the module and insert the replacement module, then screw it back in and you're ready to go. The GBD Pocket 3 high-end model features the Intel i7-1195G7 CPU and Intel Iris Xe graphics. It's the same model that is used on the high-performance GBD Win 3 and WinMax 2021 models. It comes with 16 gigs of LPDDR4X RAM running at 3733 megahertz. For storage you have 1TB of M.2 NVMe PCIe SSD. Inside you can find a 35W battery which we will test the stats on later on. Although the GPD Pocket 3 uses the same processor as their gaming handhelds, it is by default at a lower TDP of 15 instead of 20 like the others. This will help conserve battery power and very high performance may not be required for tasks such as web browsing or working with office documents. You can of course increase the TDP to 20 watts for more performance but at the cost of using more battery power. We start our benchmark with Passmark which pushes the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage to their maximum in a series of artificial tests for maximum performance. 
The GPD Pocket 3 has a score of 2989, which is a very reasonable score. Our next test is PC Mark, which is more of your day to day usage series of performance tests. These range from web browsing, video conferencing, media consumption, and large office documents. The GPD Pocket 3 scores 4695. Our last system benchmark is for 3D Mark, which tests the CPU and GPU together for their performance. This can be used for tasks such as video decoding, image processing, and of course gaming. The Pocket 3 scores a decent 1038. For the gaming benchmarks, we are running these tests at 15 watts TDP, so the scores will be lower than the GPD gaming handouts. But as mentioned, this can be increased to 20 watts to have similar performance. We start the gaming test with Forza Horizon 4 running at 1280 x 720 on ultra settings. The GPD Pocket 3 scores 28 frames per second. Next, we are testing Street Fighter 5 running at 1920x1080 with maximum settings. The Pocket 3 reaches a reasonable 33.4 frames per second. Next, we are running the Final Fantasy 14 benchmark at 1920x1080 on the high desktop settings. The GPD Pocket 3 scores 2992. Our final test is for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We are using 1280x720 resolution, running the test with the lowest and highest graphic settings to compare. The Pocket 3 scores 32 FPS on the lowest graphic settings and 20 on the highest. They're decent scores. Let's have a quick recap of the benchmark scores as well as the battery test results. Keeping in mind that these tests were performed on the default 15 watts TDP, the scores are very good. There's good scores for both the system and gaming benchmarks. Our battery life test results are around what GPD provided. Under full load, the battery lasted 1 hour 58 minutes. Sitting idle on the desktop, we saw around 7 to 8 hours battery life. Overall, the GPD Pocket 3 is very impressive. We like that the display can be rotated to turn into a tablet style device, although not automatically reorientating the screen is a bit of a letdown. The CPU is, as we already know, very high performing, and if you do need that extra boost of power for gaming, then you can increase the TDP. We like the modular design, where you can replace the modules as and when needed. The RS232 port, for example, is great for IT technicians. We hope to see some more modules released in the future. For the average day-to-day -day tasks for home and work and a bit of gaming on the side, you won't find a better mini laptop than the GPD Pocket 3. That wraps up our review of the GPD Pocket 3. We hope you found it useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you have not already and we hope to see you in our next video.